Arno, I have known you for over 20 years and you are without question one of the world's master librarians. You created the Dutch Military Intelligence Open Source Intelligence Unit and you've gone on to pioneer the teaching of open source intelligence and the structuring of digital libraries. So I'd like to ask you to tell us just a little bit about your background and how you see librarianship as an essential factor in any major international investigation. Robert, thank you very much for your kind words. For your kind words, we know each other indeed already more than, than, than 20 years. It was back in the early 90s of the previous century when I uh, was a scientific literature searcher for the Dutch Defense, uh, uh, Dutch uh, Documentation and Information Center, when I discovered uh, the joy and love for internet, which I had never heard of before. I was used to using all kinds of fantastic commercial online databases such as LexisNexis, Factiva, Dialog, etc. Et uh, and I was used in using, of course, scientific and public libraries to get my information to solve information problems. But the internet for me in 1990, 1991 was pretty new. And what I discovered and what I tried to develop was a system where I can use all three sources, internet, commercial databases, and scientific libraries to provide answers to questions instead of simply shoving over a pile of documentation or a pile of paper like so many other old-fashioned librarians do. And that was the time when uh, the Dutch Defense Intelligence Service discovered me. Uh, they were my customer. I didn't know that, but they were my customer. And I provided them with answers to their questions. They came with me to me with an information problem, and I tried to solve that problem by giving the correct answers so they could take decisions and instigate change. And that's what I've been doing all my life. I was invited by the Dutch Defense Intelligence Service to come over. They were impressed by what I had developed. And they asked me to do the same, establish their open source intelligence shop, which I did. Um, I had the chance to develop that into a full-fledged bureau and open source intelligence capability. Uh, it got a little bit out of hand in 2008. Uh, it got so out of hand that uh, people asked me can we not simply pay you for your services? Well, you can't. You can't simply pay somebody for the Intel service I established in 2008 with permission of the Minister of Defense, my own little company, to travel the world and share my passion for open source Intel. And in 2013, I resigned altogether. And now I do this professionally for 120% of my time. And I love to do it. <laughs> I love what you do. And I want to unpack something you've said, which is very important which is for the past several centuries, librarians have been about acquisition of raw information and cataloging it. And you are one of the pioneers who changed librarianship toward um, discovery, discrimination, distillation, and delivery of decision support. And I think that's a huge, huge effort. And that's the reason why you were asked to be the technical commission and the master librarian. Uh, for the Judicial Commission on, uh, of Inquiry. Now, let me ask you this. You talk about three major sources. So you have internal databases, and then you have commercial databases, and then you have the internet. Uh, you have been asked to create a massive online library having to do with human trafficking and, and uh, child sex abuse, a multilingual library. Uh, do you have any thoughts on scattered areas where you might begin your work and how you would make available to the public this master library? Well, the point is that many people believe that A, all information is digital and all that digital information is available through this one very famous search engine from the West. Both are completely wrong. Uh, there's only a fraction of information available in the World Wide Web and only a fraction of that information on the World Wide Web is accessible for the search engine, because as you know, 99% uh, of all information on the World Wide Web is hidden away in what's called the deep web, or the dark web, or the invisible web, or what you call it. Now, the point is this. There are many, many more sources on the internet than just the World Wide Web. There's also something like Internet Relay Chat. And that is where exactly our targets hang out, because nobody indexes that, and nobody knows it's out there. There are something like Usenet, NNTP discussion groups, where criminals hang out and they are not being followed by anybody. There are something like a file transfer protocol, where you can get access to hidden information on the web. 
etc., etc., etc. And the trick of a real digital librarian or an information freak, which is what I find a much better term for what I do, is to get all these sources together and make a plan of attack to know exactly what the sources are, where do these criminals hang out, where are these victims, and get access there to that information. If I understand you correctly, and I completely agree with everything you've said, part of your discovery process as a master librarian is to discover non-digital sources and ensure that they're digitized and properly put into this overall uh, architecture. Now okay. you've also, you've also uh, if I understand you correctly, said that as a master librarian, you will, like a great art museum curator, provide an explanation of the provenance of each piece of information. You are, in essence, a quality control provider for information about, in this instance, human trafficking and child sex abuse. Could you elaborate on that? Yeah, the point is, and you're absolutely right there, as always, Robert, there is so much junk out there, there's so much nonsense information out there, and we can think about Mr. Trump whatever we like. But if he talks about fake news and fake media, he may have a point because there's a lot of junk out there and many people uh, simply abuse all these developments for their own good and for their own, for their own political gain. That's why I like the it and so much because there's no political uh, pressure behind it. There's no political viewpoint there. It's just for the good of humanity. That's um, I, I, I think you, you bring together everything that's good about librarianship. Now, what about legal aspects? When you get into the whole issue of, of people who are presumably committing crimes, whether it's money laundering or routine smuggling or human trafficking, there's this danger of publishing materials that are defamatory, libelous, slanderous, whatever. Are there any librarian provisions for dealing with uh, controversial material that is perhaps evidentiary, but you want to avoid the issue of defamation and, li and libel and slander. Well, what we need to realize is, uh, we don't necessarily have to republish the full text content of the information we find. We may uh, stick to republishing the metadata of that information, at least record that information is out there and make sure that we can get access to it if have to. We don't have to republish that and thereby actually uh, adding to this stream of nonsense. I see, I see. What I, what I would do if I uh, was uh, uh, allowed and able to set up a information capability for the tribunal, I would actually design a system where we can actually not just find all the information with all these different sources, uh, especially the hidden sources, but then design some scheme of republishing only the metadata and store the information somewhere safe thereby getting the best of both worlds, which is getting access to the information we need, if there's a case, um, and not republishing that, and thus contributing to hurting more people. That's wonderful. Now, you are a master librarian who works in multiple languages, and you have other people that work in other languages. Other than English and French and German and Russian, what other languages do you have a perception are important to include in this international library? I am afraid I am too primitive for that. I only speak four languages, and that's about it. I should have learned at school something like Chinese and Arabic, uh, but I stick, unfortunately, to Dutch, English, French, and German, and that's about it. For well, that, you have to make use of automatic translating programs to get the most out of the information that's out there, and then maybe use professional translators for the really hot documents. Let me, let me give you an idea that I want you to speak to, give it back to me, uh, which is about forming an international network of multilingual librarians. Why don't you give me that idea back? Yeah. Sounds like a fantastic idea. Uh, what we may want to do is to have an international forum, uh, an international discussion group of librarians with the same ideas and the same attitudes from different countries and different language capabilities, get those together and reinforce each other. That's perfect, Arno. Uh, is there anything else you want to say? Uh, I, I mean, the leading question is how would you spend a million dollars and what would you do next? Why don't you just end on that note without reference to money, just if you were creating this master library, what are some of the first steps you would take? The most important thing in any library 
is the functionality where a librarian tries to make a perfect match between the supply side of information and the demand side of information. Now, I'm pretty good at the supply side of information. I think I know where to get it. What I really should know now is what the demand side of information is. I'd like to give a presentation to the tribunal for, let's say, an hour or so, explaining to them what we can mean for them, how we can make all that information accessible. And I'd like to uh, challenge them, and I want to hear from the tribunal what exactly their wishes are. And if I know that, if I know the, the, the demand side of information, I can build up that system and support this, this case. You know, Arno, I'm thinking much, much bigger beyond that, because what I've just realized is you could create a library that is so valuable that Interpol, Europol, Scotland Yard, the FBI realize oh, yeah, yeah. you are their librarian. Yeah, yeah it would be fantastic if we have uh, set up this library uh, from the uh, beginning up and it has some meaning if the library starts to develop, if it starts to um, deploy its functionality into supporting the tribunal, that would be the ideal moment to find uh, a collaborative effort together with Interpol, with Europol, and all the other institutes that are out there. Maybe that's one of the main tasks in the beginning of the library, to create a network of international librarians, international information professionals in this effort. That's superb. And the only other thought I have is that it might be a library that needs to be compartmented so that there are certain sections of the library that are restricted to law enforcement professionals that have encrypted... Absolutely. Absolutely. What you, what you find will be legally challenging, will be legally challenging. Uh, it could be that we are actually disturbing ongoing operations against child traffickers. And we don't want that. We need to have a close cooperation with law enforcement and police forces all over the world. Otherwise, we may uh, destroy their operations. That's the last thing we want. I, it's extremely important that you have professional experience in, in the importance and delicacy of that relationship. Yeah. Arno, uh, is there anything else you want to say uh, at all uh, about the future of libraries or the value of libraries? Anything at all as, as closing thoughts? Information is power. Um, the, you know, the information position of the tribunal is essential for this work. I always make a distinction between two terms, information profile, what you know, information need is what you want to know. Both are essential for the tribunal and I'm flattered and I'm honored and thrilled that I'm allowed to play my little part there. We are the power behind the ITNJ. Add your voice. Sign the treaty.